are ready to talk a little bit about uh, triangles to introduce that into our angles discussion. So we're in section 1.2. First, let's discuss angles. There are um, names that we give to different angles depending on their size. And so if we have an angle that is called acute, um, it might look like this is an example of an acute angle like this right here. So acute angles are angles that are less than 90 degrees, okay? They're less than 90 degrees. Um, they're between zero, actually, technically, they're between zero and 90 degrees because we do have negative angles and things like that. So they're positive angles between zero and 90 degrees. Um, an angle that is 90 degrees is a right angle. I'm sure that you are familiar with that. Lots of times right angles are... Um, are indicated by a little box right there where they meet at the vertex, um, they are perpendicular. That's what perpendicular lines meet at right angles. So obtuse is an angle that is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So it might look like this, maybe something like that would be an obtuse angle. And then a straight angle is an angle that is equal to 180 degrees. So it measures 180 degrees. Um, this should make some sense to us because half of 360 is 180. And so that would be halfway around the circle is 180 and all the way around would be 360. So what a straight angle is, it's half of a circle. Okay, complementary angles. I think you've heard these terms before, but it's two angles that add up to two angles that add up to 90 degrees are called complementary angles. Um, supplementary angles are two angles that add up to 180 degrees. Those are supplementary angles. So real quick, let's find the complement of 23 degrees. What we would do to find its complement is we would subtract 23 from 90. So we get 90 minus 23. What does that give us? 90 minus 23 gives us 67 degrees. That's the complement of 23 degrees. We would do the same thing here. For B, we would say, what is 90 minus 47 degrees? And this complement would be 43 degrees. Um, we would say 90 minus 68 degrees, and its complement would be 22 degrees, would be its complement. Um, what is the supplement? To find the supplement, we would subtract this angle from 180. So we'd say 180 minus 140 would be 40 degrees. This is the supplement to this angle right here. What would be the supplement for 130, for, from 32? We take 180 minus 32, and that will give us four, um, um, that's not right, 148 degrees. 148 degrees is what we'd get there. Um, you can always check, you could add this together. That's 10, 40, 80, 180, that's what it would be. What is the complement, or I'm sorry, the supplement for 101 degrees? Um, that would be 180 minus 101, which would give us 79 degrees. These are the supplement of those angles. Okay, just like that, um, similar figures are figures that have the same shape but are different sizes. Um, so you could have a square here. Square has the same length as it does width, and you can have a square here. These are the same shape, different sizes. Those are similar figures. They don't have to be a regular figure. They could be irregular figures, but they have to be the same shape, different sizes. Those are called similar figures. Figures that are the same shape and the same size have a different label. Those are called congruent. You might have heard that word before. Okay, so now we have this big theorem, Euclid's theorem. It says here, if... Um, two triangles are similar, they have the same shape, not the same size, then their corresponding sides are proportional to each other. So, in the figure that I've given you on the paper, you have two triangles and they're similar to each other. So what we're about to do is 
write some proportions, some true statements about the lengths of the side. So let me just make some space right here and we will, we will draw some conclusions about um, what are some accurate proportions we can draw. So um, the sides have to be corresponding. So here's my first triangle that you guys kind of have on your sheet here. This is A, B, and this is C. And here's my second triangle and it's similar. So even if my drawing doesn't look the same shape, it's meant to be the same shape. So we'll pretend like that is the truth of what's happening here. Um, right here, right here, right here. This don't really look, but that's okay. We're gonna pretend that these are similar figures. These are triangles. These triangles are similar. Okay, so if we know that two triangles are similar, then we can write these statements knowing they're true. They're pro the corresponding sides are similar. So I labeled A and A prime, sim uh, corresponding sides, corresponding sides, corresponding sides. So here's some true statements we can make. Um, we can say B is to B prime, corresponding sides, as A is to A prime. That's a true statement. We could do this. We could say C is to C prime, C is to C prime, as B is to B prime, as B is to B prime. Or we could say C is to C prime, as A is to A prime. Or we could do it backwards. We could say, okay, C prime is to C as A prime is to A. Those are all true statements. C prime is to C as A prime is to A. Here are other true statements we could make. These are all good proportions. We'll label these good. Uh, we could also say B is to C, B is to C as B prime is to C prime. B prime is to C prime. We could also say C prime is to A prime as C is to A. These are all good proportions. Here's an example of a bad proportion. This is not a true statement. Just make sure you are not this inconsistent. These are bad. This is wrong. Bad wrong. This is what this is. Um, I cannot say A is to C as C prime is to A prime. Do you see, I used the same sides, but I didn't write them in the right order. I said A is to C, I should have said as A prime is to C prime. That's what's wrong with this one. Um, you cannot just willy nilly, you can't say just like, maybe I'll say B is the B prime, B is the B prime, right? B is the B prime, as C prime is to C, as C prime is to C. I use the right things, but not in the right order. If I go from blue triangle to green, I have to go from blue to green and not switch back. So they, these, are in, these are not okay. So there's a little bit of consistency we have to be careful about when we're, when we're making these proportions. But there's a lot of good ones we can use. And so as long as we're in the good, we will get right answers. We have four examples on this one, so let's do these four. Number one says, I'm gonna leave these pictures up because I do want these pictures. Number one says, let us find C prime, and they give us this other information. So they say one, find C prime when B is equal to 3, C is equal to 24, and B prime is equal to 1. All right. So let's, let's, given that these are similar triangles, let's write a good proportion that involves these. We could say B is to C, B is to C, because we have that, as B prime is to C prime. B prime is to C prime. Is this a good proportion? Yes, it is. So let's fill in this in. This is going to be 3 is to 24 as 1 is to C prime. I don't know. 
but I can cross multiply here. I can say 3 C prime is 24 times 1, divide by 3, and I'll get that C prime is 8, just like that. There aren't units associated with these, so I can just leave it as 8. Let's see, how about number 2? Number 2 says find B when A is 51, A prime is 17, and B prime is 8. All right. So let's see. What they told us was A prime and B prime and A. So let's see. We could say, how about this? Um, A is the A prime. A is the A prime as A is the A prime as B is the B prime, as B is the B prime. Again, this is not the only good proportion I could write, but this one will do. Let's see, that would be 51 is to 17 as B, which I don't know, is to eight. And we could cross multiply here um, and say 17 times B is 51 times eight divide by 17, and we'll get that B, I think, is 24 when I do that. Let me see, is that what I got before? Yeah, B is 24. All right, now let's do a little bit of a word problem. Number three, it says, number three says, a tree cast a shadow of 31 feet. At the same time, a five foot vertical pole cast a shadow of 0.56 feet. How tall is the tree? We definitely, I think, need to try to draw a picture here. So, here is the sunshine right here. And so, it is um, cast, it is hitting a tree. So, here's my tree right here. Here's my tree. And the tree is casting a shadow on the ground right there. Okay, there's his shadow. Shadow, shadowy figure. Okay, <clears throat> now, um, at the same time, there's some other vertical pole right here. Here's my five foot vertical pole, and it's also casting a shadow. Also casting a shadow. So the angle that the sun's hitting this tree, here's the angle coming down. It's hitting the pole at the same angle, that's what we know. All right, this is a 90 degree angle. This is a 90 degree angle, okay. And this angle is the same. This angle right here. Oh my goodness, this one not. This angle is the same as this angle because the sun's hitting them at the same. And so um, the sum of the angles of any triangle add up to 180. So if we take 180, minus 90 minus this angle, I'm gonna get whatever this is. If I take 180 minus 90 minus this angle, I'm gonna get the same value for this. Here is the truth about triangles. If, if all three angles are the same, then those are the same shape, which means they're similar. So let's back up from that. If two triangles have the same angle, because the sum of all three angles have to add up to 180, if two are the same, then the third one has to be the same. So you're looking at similar figures. They have to have the same shape. So since this angle is 90 and this angle is the same because of the sun, these are similar triangles. So that frees us up to use proportions to try to solve things. So what did they tell us? They said, I lost my little sheet. It says, the tree casts a shadow of 31 feet. So down here's the shadow and this is 31 feet feet okay and then it says um at the same time a five foot vertical pole this is five feet is casting a shadow of point point five six feet and then it says how tall is the tree that's what we want to know let's set up a proportion i'm going to say x is the 31 as five is the point five six 
I wrote down the units just to make sure that they didn't slip in something in meters or centimeters or inches or something I needed to convert or yards. And I don't. Everybody's in feet. So let's see. We could solve this. We could cross multiply. And we'll say x times 0.56. These feet will cancel. That's fine. Is equal to 5 times 31 feet. And then I'll divide both sides by 0.56. And we get that x is equal to, what did I get there? 277. I think I had to round just a little bit feet. That is how tall the tree is. It's a tall tree. All right, so um, let us do the last one. This one takes, we have to think a little bit on this one. It's a little bit more involved, but we can do it. Here we go. They give us this picture. So I'm going to try to recreate this picture. It say, here's a triangle, and it says, it's got some different stuff going on. It's got this side coming down here, alongside here, side here, kind of splits right there. And it says that this angle is measures theta, and that this angle also measures theta. So those are the same angle measurement. That's important. From here to here is 9. From here to here is x. From here to here is 8. This is y. This is 10. Okay, I think I copied it down. So, all they say for number 4 is to find x and find y. We're going to find x and find y. Alright, so we've got to think about this. Um, I see three triangles here. I see this one, this one, I see this one, and then I see the big one. Um, I want to take note of the angles that are in common. Let's see. If we look at this big outer one, I'm going to outline this one in black. This big triangle here. I've got one angle here called theta, and I'm going to name, name this other angle here, I'm going to call it B. That black triangle has a, theta and B in it. If I look at this one, which I'm going to look at it in green, right here, this side, this side, and this side, I notice that this angle also has Beta and theta. It's got two of the same angles. So I want to think about this green one. First, I'm going to pull it out. This is B and this is theta. And we don't know what this is. Okay. Um, let's see. This is 8 and this is X and this is Y. I want to compare it to this big black one. So I'm going to pull out the black one so I can just look at it separately. It's, so it's not so cumbersome. Here's the big black one. It said that this is the angle theta and that this is the angle beta or B and see this side is Y and this side is 10 and this side down here is 9 plus X. Let's see. Here's the big black triangle. Theta, beta, 10, Y, 9 plus X. Here's a small triangle. Theta, beta, 8, Y, 8, X, Y. Okay. These are two triangles. We already saw the case where if we know the angles of two triangles, if two of the angles are the same, the third angle has to be the same. If all of the angles are the same, those are the same shape, meaning those are similar, meaning the sides are proportional. That is what we have going on here because I see two angles saying this has got to be the same, same shape, similar, proportional. But we need to orient them the same so we can find the corresponding sides. So I want us just to imagine I took this, this triangle and I flipped it over my arm. It didn't change the shape, it just, it just made it oriented a different way. So if I, if I did that first, then what would happen here? Well, if we flipped it down, let's think about that. If we flipped it down, then if I flip that down, then this is going to be kind of going 
this. And this, is that right? Let's see if I've got that down. Yeah. So this is still B, right? And this is this angle right here. And down here is theta. All right. All right. But <clears throat> that works. Um, let's label the rest of this. This is still the X, right? This long side right here is Y. And this other side right here is 8. I'm going to look at, this is true, but I want to just concentrate on this picture. The reason is it almost looks exactly like this. See? Theta, beta, this side. Oh, this side is to this side, as this side is to this side, as this side is to this side. Now I can start to write some proportions. Let's write a couple. Let's involve 10 and 8. I'll say 10 is to 8 as, how about this, y is to x, as y is to x. That's one thing I could write. Let's do it again. Let's do 10, also 10, is to 9 plus x, as to this side, as 8 is to y. Now, what I did in writing those proportions is I'm, it's going to enable me to come up with a couple of equations. And I have two things I don't know. I don't, don't know x and I don't know y. So, when you have two unknowns, you need at least two equations to solve that. So, here are two equations we'll solve that with that involves those. So, here we go. Let's cross multiply and see what we can do. 8y, 8y is 10x. Okay? I can solve for y by dividing both sides by 8, and I'll get 10x over 8, and I can simplify that into 5 over 4x. y is equal to 5 over 4x. Over here, let's do this. 10y is equal to 8 times 9 plus x. Now, I know that y is equal to 5 over 4x, so I'm going to use that substitution over here. Then I have one equation with x. I can solve for x and use that value after I solve it in here and solve for y. So let's do that. This will be, let me write it over here. 10y is equal to 8 times 9 plus x. But then I said y is really 5 over 4x. So I have 10 times 5 over 4x. I made that substitution. I'm going to distribute this is 72 plus 8x. All right. This is really 10 over 1. This is 2 can go into 4. 2 times 2 can go into 10. 5 times. This is really 25 over 2x. Um, I'm going to move the 8x over here. Minus 8x is 72. This is really 8 over 1. If I want a common denominator of 2, I'll say times 2 times 2 will give me 16x. 25 minus 16 is 9x over 2, which is 72. Um, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 and get 9x is 44, 144, divide by 9. And I get that x is 16. Okay, that's one of the things. I found x. How will I find y? I will substitute in here. y is equal to 5 over 4 times x, which is 16. I wrote it as a fraction. I'm going to say 4 goes into 16 4 times. This is going to be 20 over 1 or 20. Y is 20. All right, you have a homework problem that is a little bit involved like that, so I want to make sure you saw how to do this. Great.